This is a programme for Les Ballets Negres for a short season of 14th to 21st of March 1948 at the Embassy Theatre Swiss Cottage in London. Note the sixpenny hinge. You paid your six, your six pence and then you could open it. It's got an advert in, the, in on the back that you can, at a matinee performance, have afternoon tea brought to you uh, on a tray in your seat in the stalls. Um, and you can have Huntley and Palmer cake with it. And there are food parcels to Germany, all zones, Poland, Austria, Holland, etc. Contents include ham, lard, soap, cheese, cigarettes, nylons, coffee, etc. All parcels fully insured. Founded in 1946 by the Jamaican-born choreographer Berto Pasuka, they made their debut in London in April that year. The reviews were glowing. Carol Brahms wrote in the Evening Standard, A new kind of ballet was born last night at a playhouse in Westbourne Grove, where the Ballet Negra opened an eight-week season at the 20th Century Theatre. Make Notting Hill your mecca. You will not sit through a lot of dreary tap routines, nor will you see a bevy of coal black mamas cakewalking. What you will see is emotion turned into living rhythm by a company of Negro dancers. What you will feel is a compassionate understanding that cannot but wing home to every heart in the house. During their season, they appeared on BBC television and in cinemas on a Pathé newsreel. After London, Le Ballet Negre immediately went on a tour of Britain and then the continent. And the company went on performing in Britain and Europe until it disbanded in 1953. Today, however, as Britain's and probably Europe's first black dance company with black artistic director, they are probably not as well known as they should be. This programme from 1948 gives useful insights into the company, in particular the anti-colonial but integrationist stance underlying the stories of their ballets. The first piece on the programme, They Came, is set in Africa and explores tensions between white colonists and African villagers. It has two parts. The first, in the 19th century, shows British missionaries arriving in a jungle village. Backed by soldiers, they impose Western medicine on the villagers. The second part is set during the Second World War, that in 1946 had just finished. Black and white are depicted as equals and seeking common sanctuary. An African soldier is killed, directing them to safety. The political implication here is that if modern black soldiers are good enough to fight alongside white ones as equals, they are therefore capable of governing themselves and the colonies should be given their independence. The storyline of Pasuka's ballet loosely resembles that of the film Men of Two Worlds, directed by Thorold Dickinson which also explored tensions between African religious practices and modern medicine. The film was made during the war and partly filmed in Technicolor in 1943 on location in what is now Tanzania. Unfortunately, some of the footage was lost when a German submarine torpedoed the ship, carrying it back to Britain. Basuka helped Dickinson refilm some ceremonial dances in London in a film studio. The dancers from the film became his company and he used the money he'd earned from the film to hire the 20th Century Theatre for their opening season. De Profit was the best received work in the company's opening season. It's set in a Jamaican village where the prophet performs miraculous healings. When he then attempts to fly, he's arrested and the piece ends with him dying in prison. 
It was loosely based on the life of the charismatic Jamaican preacher Alexander Bedward, founder of the Jamaican Native Baptist Free Church. Bedward was arrested in 1921 after he led several hundred followers on a march on Kingston, claiming that, like an Old Testament prophet, he would ascend to heaven. He was arrested and committed to an asylum. Carol Brahms wrote that The story of the prophet who promised his flock to fly to heaven on his outstretched arms and too late found he couldn't, danced with piety and set to spirituals, needed no knowledge of the African dance to be infinitely moving. Beryl de Zoot, in The New Statesman and Nation, wrote that Pasuka himself is a magnificent dancer and actor. And his prophet, who because he tries to fly to heaven, is clapped in jail, is really superb. His body shrinks or stretches to heroic height at will, or rather at the command of the rhythm by which he is possessed. The scene where a uniformed policeman arrests the prophet, beating him to the ground with his truncheon, is particularly vicious. Writing in 1950, Ferno Hall noted that Conflicts in Jamaican society were brought out by the brutal figure of the policeman whose recurrent entrances gave social perspective to the story. Members of Le Bale Negra were aware of current political debates about colonialism. Richie Riley, Pasuka's close friend and collaborator, came from Jamaica in 1946 to study ballet in London and help Pasuka with his company. Registering on his arrival at the colonial office, he was sent to stay in a hostel in Tavistock Square for black students from Africa, India and the Caribbean. He later recalled Pandit Nehru, Kwame Nkrumah, quite a few other African exiles of the time, used to meet there at night and talk politics, but politics referred to the colonies rather than England. The ballet Agre was named after the Ghanaian missionary and educationalist James Agre. After studying at universities in the United States, he led several research expeditions to Africa, gathering information in order to improve education on the continent. The programme quotes Agre. One can get some sort of tune from the white note, one can get some kind of melody on the black notes, but for complete harmony, one needs the two together. In Pasuka's abstract metaphorical ballet, the white keys are the female dancers, the black keys are males, Pasuka himself takes the role of the pianist, and their harmony is threatened by the figure of fear. All these, together with the colourful, light-hearted Market Day, had been in the company's repertoire since the beginning. The one new ballet on the 1948 programme was Blood. Set in Haiti, this tells a tragic story about a couple honeymooning in a tourist hotel in the Caribbean. They dance a waltz together, but hear the sound of drumming coming from the jungle outside. Entering the jungle, they discover a voodoo ceremony. The husband doesn't know that his wife is of mixed race. The programme calls her the half-caste girl. The power of the ceremony overwhelms her and she abandons him for the cult. When he returns another evening in disguise to try to get her back, he's unmasked and stabbed and his wife commits suicide. Blood raises problems about mixed-race children. Richie Riley later recalled that some of the British-born dancers in Le Ballet Negre were from port cities like Cardiff, Liverpool and the East End of London, with white mothers and black sailor fathers. The tragedy in the piece comes from the fact that the half-caste girl had, for whatever reason, kept her dual heritage a secret from her husband. She was therefore cut off from her African cultural roots. GP, the critic for the Manchester Guardian, particularly admired the incessant beating of the tom-toms, which has a power that it would be a long business to analyse. She also admired Pearl Johnson's portrayal of the half-caste girl, whose movements and mime have immense and unholy significance. 
fear, fascination, and above all, physical ecstasy and physical revulsion can never have been more searchingly reproduced for stage purposes. Les Ballets Negres were clearly a strong company with powerful and well-received ballets. So why did they fold in 1953? A clue can be found in the financial accounts they submitted with their unsuccessful Arts Council application. The company seems to have, to have broken even financially from box office receipts, but rarely made enough money uh, to be able to create new ballets. I've already said that they made four ballets for their opening season. They made two more in 1947-48, Blood and The Bride Cry and two in 1950, Cabaret 1920 and Nine Nights. In 1946, they were said to be the first new thing in dance in London since the beginning of the war. By the early 1950s, they must have been going back to the same theatres with essentially the same increasingly familiar ballets. By 1953, key dancers like Pearl Johnson were leaving the company to dance elsewhere. The make or break year seems to have been 1951, when the company were not accepted to be part of the official programme for that summer's Festival of Britain. According to Richie Riley, they were told that it was a festival of British, not colonial culture. Today, Following the result of the referendum to leave the European Union, there no longer seems to be any consensus on the nature of British cultural identity. National identity is not found by looking back to an imagined, idealised past, make Britain great again, make America great again. It's what one makes with these cultural resources in the present that's relevant to the present and accepts the present situation. I'd argue that in the late 1940s, Les Ballets Negres were making an important contribution to contemporary British dance culture. It was only in Britain at that time that Les Ballets Negres could have achieved all that they did. It was in London that Richie Riley was able to take part in anti-colonial debates led by leading figures like Pandit Nehru and Kwame Nkrumah. It was in London that P Berto Basuka could find Nigerian drummers to accompany their dancing. Whereas being light-skinned was valued in the Caribbean social hierarchy, in London the presence of mixed-race children was a source of social anxiety. Ballets like Agre, Blood, De Prophet and They Came could only have been made at that time in London for British and continental European audiences. Les Ballets Negres deserve to be much better known and really celebrated. This video draws on research from one of the chapters of Mike Huxley and my book, Dance, Modernism and Modernity. Thank you for watching.